welcome to my channel. This is Gaming with Grandma. All right, guys. So here's the discussion. So let's see. Here's my paperwork for the hospital. I'll grab it real quick. This is all my information from the hospitals. Um, let's see. So the first one that I want to discuss. Sorry, I got a few papers in here that don't belong in here, but that's okay. Uh, let's see. So, um, 224, uh, 225, 222, and, uh, 221, and then... And then the last one was 228. So let's discuss this. So I went to the hospital in, um, okay, so I was in the hospital on the first visit was 2022 to 2024, okay? Um, then this one right here, uh, was 225. That was when I left the hospital. And then the other ones are notations of my admissions, my notes. Um, uh, I, I literally copied everything. Um, my one visit, uh, was, um, yeah, it was, uh, 2020. 2124. Um, so yeah, and then this one was 28. That's February 28, 2024 to 3 6 2024. Um, yeah, so I've been in and out. Um, my first my first time going in the hospital was 2021, if I'm correct. Um I said 2021, didn't I? February 21. Um, so my experience in the hospital this time from last time I was in the hospital when it first started, um, for some reason, it's really, really weird because when the paramedics came, I was talking like a child. Yes, you heard me right. I was talking like a child. My son told me to call 911. So I literally did this, and I was like, they're not listening. Why aren't they listening? Why aren't they picking up? And literally, I had no clue about cell phones at all. I didn't even know what a cell phone was. Um, so, and they, they said that it had to do with the childhood past. Um, something that traumatized me as a child. Uh, I'm not going to bring that up. That's, that's in the past. I'm not worried about that anymore. Uh, no judgment on anybody in my family. I love you all very much. Um, you know, if something bad in your past interferes with, like, pain, uh, you will go back to that child, that child's life. Um, I think my son said it sounded like I was maybe 10. Um, yeah, they said it was traumati traumatization for my childhood, um, which I have no clue what that meant, but oh well. Um, so when they came and got me, I was slurring my words and I couldn't, you know, I couldn't really speak normal. Um, and they thought I was having a heart attack or a stroke. Um, I had a CT scan, an MRI, a EKG, a blood tests, x-rays, they, you name it, they did it. Um, and, um, I was figuring they were going to figure it out. They didn't. They did not figure out I had vertigo, which is really weird why they didn't detect that. Um, they could have, um, if they would have asked me. Um, in the hospital, it was third floor. And I literally, uh, felt like no one was listening. The nurses were... Some nurses were really rude, treating me like a mental psycho. 
Um, I had an in-home health nurse uh, come yesterday, and uh, she bring me this packet. Oops. Uh, my little wristband that I wore in the hospital. I usually save them. Um, it's called Ancient, Ancient Care, A-C-C-E-N-T-C-A-R-E. Um, but this is an home health care. Um, they're going to have my walker delivered. Um, they're also bringing my shower chair, which I've already proved to the nurse I can walk. Um, she said it took me from my chair to the door and back seven seconds. Um, I told her, I said, you want to see what it is like without my, without my booties? And I took them off. She's like, are you, if you, are you okay? Yeah, I'm okay to do it. Otherwise, I wouldn't do it. Um, if my vertigo wasn't, you know, aligned or whatever, I would have never done it. Um, but, yeah, I took off my shoes and tried to walk. And I literally walked like a turtle. <laughs> literally walked like a turtle. Because it felt like I was stepping on rocks. Um, so, I got my little booties on. Um, but, anyways, um, the second time I went in the hospital... They just gave me medicine and sent me home. The third time I was in the hospital, I went to lay on my mat um, to do the drops in my ears. And I literally was frozen. I couldn't move. I couldn't get up. I couldn't do anything. My whole body was like frozen. The two paramedics that came, they treated me like another psych patient. Which makes me upset. Just because you have mental illness doesn't mean you're making it up. I mean, yeah, they run all the tests, but they didn't prove anything. They couldn't find out what was wrong with me. Um, a lot of doctors are literally looking at the results and not what the condition could be. They're not trying to solve it. They're just saying, well, labs are good. Everything's good. Go home. No, that's not right. Um, so my son had me transferred to Naperville. They were 10 times worse than DuPage. They literally, I told them I could not move my feet. What do they do? They grab my feet, throw them down, and say, stop it. We already know you're faking. And I'm like, dude, as soon as they threw my feet down and sat me in the chair and pushed me to the waiting room, my feet were in so much pain. It was like electric, like someone was taking one of those electric shock thingies and putting them on both your feet. And... I felt like I was going to die. I mean, my feet were bad. And I kept telling them something was wrong. So they pushed me in the waiting room. When the pain went away, I was okay. So I went to grab my phone to text my son, and down I went. I don't remember, but I know I blacked out because it just went totally black on me. Um, I remember my left leg being pulled one way. My right leg was being pulled another way. I mean, it wasn't both the same, but one leg went this way and another leg went that way. And then they were trying to pick me up. They bruised my arms right here. And I had a big bruise right here. Talk about abuse. If I'm going to sue a hospital, I'm going to sue them. I mean, I had bruises like all over my arm from the treatment. And they kept saying, stop it. We know you're faking it. And I'm like, these people are so stupid. Um, so I, they, they had me walk home. They did not ask me if I wanted a ride. Do you need a ride? Do you need a cab? Nothing. I had to walk home. And literally it started downpouring. And then it started hailing. So I had to put my backpack over my head. And then I got confused. And the reason why I got confused is because of the vertigo. Uh, the vertigo literally messed with my rotation. I had no clue where I was. I had no clue where I was going. I was confused. So I called 911 for help. And they treated me like I was a mental patient, basically. I told him I was coming from... He said, did you ask for a ride? I said, they didn't offer me one. He's like, well, you could have asked. I said... Well, when they don't offer you one, they normally don't have it. And unfortunately, he says all hospitals have it. So that's weird. Um, surprising they didn't offer that to me. They didn't even ask me if I had a ride before I left. They just 
Bye. See ya. Psycho. Um, so the next time I went in the hospital, I wasn't slurring my words. I wasn't having problems speaking. I wasn't frozen. Um, I was able to get up and walk, um, to the, uh, to the, um, ambulance, I think. Yeah, I don't even remember. Then they put me in the waiting room and I was getting electric shock. I was like this. And then it would go away. And a few minutes more, I'd be like this again. It would go from my feet all the way to my shoulders, down to my fingertips, underneath my arm, and then back down to my feet. And that was every 30 seconds for four hours. I was doing that every 30 seconds for four hours. Don't tell me that you wouldn't want to die. Well... I said one wrong word when I got in there and they asked me what was wrong and I was doing, you know, that they thought I was having a seizure. So they hurry up, grab me, pick me up, put me on the bed, gave me seizure medicine and it did not work. You know why? Because it wasn't a seizure. They have that on my record that I have seizures, but I don't not anymore. Um, because of the medicine that uh, Wisconsin had me on caused me to have seizures. Um, so I was in the hospital. When I came in, I just asked God, I said, God, just let me die. Just take me, let me die. I'm done. I can't do this anymore. And I literally was fed up with their system. I felt hopeless. I felt betrayed by the hospital um there was so much stuff that I just I didn't want to ha have to deal with it anymore I was just done and you know I was asking God you know let my family know I love them um sorry Yeah. Um, so the psychiatrist came in and she asked me, well, this is after they gave me all the pain meds. Um, then she came in and she says, Ellen, how are you feeling? And I said, I'm okay. Um, it's not as bad now. And she asked me, um, do you want to end your life? And I said, absolutely not. Do you want to kill yourself? No. Do you want to hurt someone? No. Are you hearing voices? No. Are you, are you uh, seeing things? No. I just want help for the pain. And they put me on psych watch. <laughs> they had a, a person sit in my room for like four days or five. I think it was four. Uh, they had a person sitting in my room for four days, which was fantastic because I didn't have anything to do. So I was able to have somebody to talk to, you know, and I told them, yeah, that was a big mistake asking God to take me uh, because they literally thought I was, I mean, they already thought I was a psych patient. Might as well, right? <laughs> yeah, but I was in there for seven days, seven days. And the last day, well, here's the story of the hospital. Second floor nurses were super nice. They never, like, looked at me like I was a psych patient. They never looked at me like I was psychotic. They never had any, like, social workers come in and review me or anything like that. And one of the nurses, when, they, when, they, when the people that were sitting in my room left, the one woman said, why'd they have you on psych, psych hold? And I said, well, the story, <laughs> the story of being electrocuted for four hours in the waiting room and uh, me saying, God, just take me um, and tell my family I love them. They literally, she's like, oh my gosh, you did. And I said, yeah, I did. <laughs> she says, why would you do that? I said, because... Four hours in the waiting room being like this all the time? Screw that. 
And people that were in for minor illnesses or minor problems, they were seen first. And some of them were leaving before me. And this one lady said, oh, dear God, they haven't put her in yet. Are you serious? And yeah, I was being electrocuted constantly. Now, I think if I was by the nurse's door, they probably would have come sooner. But they moved me because I was seasoned and they didn't want people to see. Um, which is kind of stupid. Anyway, um, they didn't have an urgency on mine. But anyways, the nurses were super nice. They didn't treat me like I was mental because they knew it wasn't mental. They knew I wasn't psychotic because they already went all over that. Um, Now that they know that I don't make up my illnesses. Now, they said there's some people that go in the hospital and say they have something, but they don't. And see, right there, that's what I'm uh, kind of upset about is the people that want attention literally go to the hospital all the time just for that. And that's not me. Um, I was trying to, you know, let them know, you know, I'm, I'm planning on going back to school, which I can't go back to school until the fall because of all of my medical appointments and, you know, my medication. Um, sometimes my medication makes me tired or sleepy. Um, But I have this medication. It's P-R-E-G-A-B-A-L-I-N. Let me ask ask Alexa what it means. Alexa, what is P-R-E-G-A-B-A-L-I-N called? Sorry, I don't have an answer for that. She doesn't have an answer. Alexa, what does P-R-E-G-A-B-A-L-I-N mean? Pregabolin. Alexa, stop. Pregabolin. And then this is for my neurons, for my shock treatment. I put an N on it so I know which pill is which. Um, And then mecasiline is for my vertigo, which I put a V on it. I don't know if you guys can see that. Um, yeah, so, and what upset me the most is my son had grabbed my box for what I got from Amazon. And I was so upset because I couldn't try it out. I couldn't mess with it. I couldn't open the box. I couldn't, you know, in the, uh, now on the sixth day, I told the doctor, yep, I'm fine. I'm going to go home. And I wasn't fine. So when the nurse came in, I told her, I said, she's like, why are you crying? Why are you upset? I said, I lied to the doctor. I just want to go home. And she's like, I'll let your nurse know. And she says, I think they'll understand. And I felt bad, you know. But she told the nurse and the nurse came in and she says, I heard that you, um, that you don't want to go home. And I said, no, I do. I just, I kind of lied telling the doctor I was okay. I mean, I'm still having problems with the room spinning. And she's like, hmm, well, maybe that's the inner ear thing. And I said, no, I got vertigo. And she's like, wait, you got vertigo? I said, I've had vertigo. She's like, and this whole time you were in the hospital the first time, they never diagnosed you with vertigo. I said, no, they didn't. I said, I told them many times I had vertigo. And she said, there was no prescription for you for vertigo in the papers. And I'm like, well, Elmhurst had, you know, stated that I had vertigo. Did you get the paperwork from Elmhurst? They're not allowed to get any records from Elmhurst because of the signing consent forms. So I would literally have to go to Elmhurst, sign the paperwork to send it to DuPage, And then they'd be able to look at my copies of my medical records. Um, So, yeah, that's kind of stupid that they do that. But anyways, I wanted to show you guys mm, the big box I got here. It's called the Shine Bot. 
Now, when I opened it up, I was just like, oh my gosh, this thing is huge. It is huge. It has a base um, that goes on the bottom. I don't want to grab the base because the base is kind of... I mean, I could. I could grab it, but then I have to put my mic down and I have to go grab it. Maybe I'll do another video of it. But yeah... But the only thing with this robot, it does not go back to charge. You literally have to, you know, empty it and clean it up and make sure everything is good. And then put it on the charger, which is no big deal. I mean, I'm not that lazy. But anyways, you know, when me and my son were trying to open this sucker, uh, I was very nervous on, you know trying to open it the correct way and not have it dump everywhere and break or whatever. But this is the controller I got. Uh, normally, I don't use the controller. But this one right here, this middle button, that's the one I use all the time. I usually don't use, like, spot clean. And, and I mean, I could do, the you know, along the sides, I could do that one. Um, but my cupboards... <laughs> My cupboards are, you know, about like that. So, uh, yeah, so there's about this much room. And this sucker, I took it off the, the thing. Ugh. This sucker is huge. Look at that. Um, but I want to show you the effects. So here's this part I want to show you. Uh, that's that. And then you just push this button. Oh my gosh, it's so heavy. Um, you push this button. And this is where you fill it up on the top, the blue thing. And this is where you dump the dirty water. Yes, it has a dirty water tank. Um, I literally forgot to take this off to let it dry. Uh, so I have to like set it somewhere and let it dry um i literally love this robot i really do um at first when i got it it said to put in cleaning solution but i was reading it and it said not to put any cleaning solution that i should um that i should uh what was it just put hot water well I basically put, like, almost boiling water. I turn on the faucet let it run for, I don't know, a minute or two. Wait till it's extremely hot. And then I take the base. Then take the base. And if you notice it's somewhat dirty, I have to clean it because the uh, roller thingy was right there. And I'm going to have to clean the roller thing again. But, yeah. So, what you have to do is you have to slide this part in and then it'll it'll clamp down and then you can carry it um she she has many modes um i literally love this thing um my floors are cleaner than ever before um now yesterday i was always afraid that the handle's gonna snap i've been very worried about that um, but I named this one Heavenly, and my robot vac is called Eden. Um, so a lot of times Eden likes to suck up my cords, don't you, Eden? Yeah, you sure do, turd butt. Um, but uh, the thing I like about her is she detects when something's tangled. My daughter's did not. So my daughter's one would drag it around, um... It never got caught or anything. Now, this one, it'll get... If it's caught, then it'll beep. So, I don't know about the other one. If the cord would... If it tangled around it, it would beep. So, my daughter hasn't said anything about it yet. So, um... But, um... Let's see what else. Um... Yeah, so I have a Ruku... Uh, I think that's what it's called, um, coming today. And I got it because my Flexbox will not connect to my Alexa. She didn't respond good. Um, usually if I say her name, she'll respond. 
Um, so, yeah. So I have Eden run this morning, and then I'll be doing my mop. I have another dry one. You get two of these. Um, you get two of them. I got to wash it um, because it sat in there. Because I thought I was going to mop again, and I didn't. So um, I literally regularly mopped my room because my room was really bad. I had to mop because I had ink on the floor and I did not want to get ink on here because I did not know if I could remove it. Um, I had gotten ink a long time ago for my other printer trying to reload ink and it never worked. It never worked. And I just threw it out. I finally found it and threw it out cause it was leaking everywhere. Uh, I was pulling out my stuff. I had ink all over my arms, ink on my hands. And if you notice, no ink. I used the hand sanitizer wipes and it cleaned it right off. I uh, didn't have a problem with it. Um, but my hospital preferred me to get vitamins. And so I went to Walgreens and got these. Um, these are the women, uh, the women multi gummies. And I take one of these a day. And because it has all the vitamins, it has everything I need. Um, and I literally, when I came home, I washed my hair in the, in the tub because I can't take a shower yet because of the uh, vertigo and the, you know, the, um, the nerve shocking. Because if I stand on my mat in the tub, I mean, I could take a bath. Um, that'd probably be a better idea. Um, but... Yeah, so, okay, so, another thing. So, I've been getting these. These are the denture cream. Uh, these are the original ones. Um, and if you look at the nozzle, how big that is, that's a huge thing. Um, I've been using those. And my daughter had given me um, some denture cream. And... I've been using that, and that works really well. And I'm going to show you which, what, which one it is. It's this one, the one with scope. Um, I literally love this one. And they had it on sale. It was only like, I think, nine bucks or something like that. Also, when me and my son went to go get my meds, uh, I was going to take my Vertigo right away. But they said Vertigo will make you sleepy, so I couldn't take it. Um, because me and my son, we went to Taco Bell. Dude, it tasted so good to not eat hospital food. Hospital food was good, but after a while, it was like I couldn't find anything that was good. So I just ate jello and pudding and ice cream. <laughs> um... And, you know, I was having constipation. I couldn't, you know, use the bathroom go to number two. So they were giving me stool softeners. And nothing was helping. And so I came home. I literally had to pass seven rocks. Seven rocks out of my bum bum. Dude. I would be, like, struggling just to push one out. They were, like, that big. I mean, I mean, they were all clumped in my bum bum um, because they were giving me the stool softer. So it was shoving them down one at a time. Like they were just combining it all in one. And I got home and my son heard me scream. He's like, are you okay? I said, I'm passing rocks. Ah! And I literally had to take the tissue paper and wipe just to get one rock out. I had to do that each time I felt like a rock was trying to come out, but it wouldn't. So I literally have to take, no, I did not take my hand to do it. I took toilet paper and I would like, I would try to grab it and pull it. And several of them I was able to. And then when I got down to the last, dude, my butthole was so swollen. Like it, it felt like I was have like I was going to have hemorrhoids. Um, but it, it cleared up after, um, a day or so. Um, yeah. If you plan on getting your gallbladder removed, don't. Please don't. Unless you have to. Unless it's an emergency that you have to. 
do not remove your gallbladder. That was my mistake thinking that if I remove my gallbladder, I will not get stones. That is a lie. I get stones and they hurt like hell. Um, a lot of times I'll get a pain in my gut saying that I have to, you know, number two. Um, and I usually go right away when I get that. Normally I don't do number two all the time, but you know, if, okay, I'm done with that. <laughs> I'm done with that conversation. I don't even want to go there anymore. Uh, grandma talking about her poop. Okay. <laughs> so anyways, I'm off till the fall, which is around August. I think it's like August. Yeah, I'm not sure. August something. Um, but I want to talk to my advisor about switching my degree to a veterinarian. Um, because I love animals. I love dealing with animals. You know, um, I want to be a, a veterinarian assistant. But I kind of want to be the, the version of, I mean, because I'll have to do IVs. And, you know, I'll have to... Uh, prep the animals for surgery. I'll have to make appointments and um, call people to remind me, remind them of appointments. So I'm not sure exactly all what I'm going to have to do. But when uh, July comes around, I'm going to school uh, to uh, get my classes for the fall because my first appointment for my vertigo is in June, guys. It's in freaking June. And my hearing test is in June. Uh, <laughs> so it's kind of, you know, weird that it's in, you know, June. Um, you know, if I, if, if I could get this all done before summer, but I guarantee I'm not. Um, and, and another thing, you know, I kind of want to just, you know, let everything settle. Because I don't want to all of a sudden jump into a class. Uh, but I, I will go and talk to my advisor uh, for the summer. So once the spring stuff is done, I'll probably go and talk to my advisor on my plan for the fall. Uh, I'll tell her I'm not wanting to enroll in summer because I don't want something else to happen. And boom, I'm back where I was. Um, but I was going through, okay, so I only had like two, two and a half weeks left and then all hell broke loose on my body and I'm just like, what the hell? So then when I came home, I'm, I, I called College of DuPage. I was trying to get a hold of somebody telling them that I had some medical issues going on, uh, and they were still trying to figure it out. Phew, I'm hot cause I'm drinking hot coffee. Um, shouldn't have had my sweatshirt on drinking hot coffee. Um, but yeah, uh, <clears throat> so the guy told me that the, they have to review the medical, um, the medical, medic, medical board and approve that, you know, I was in the hospital and that, you know, my medical wasn't the greatest and, they gave me a form to fill out. Uh, yeah. So, the form I filled out, I literally, my son had to help me because I was seeing like four computer screens. Uh, I couldn't know. And he had, to, he had to use the mouse to know where to point to. And I says, okay, click on it and I'll type. So I literally just had to type all the words that, that I was thinking in my head had no clue about making any sense to the sentences. And my son would just go in and correct the mistakes and that was it. And then I had to upload files from my phone that I could do. I could look at my phone and upload it, you know, and do the pictures. I just couldn't read the contents. So I took several pictures of my paperwork and then I sent it, I sent it in the file thing. Um, what I did was I, uh, had showed that 
um, the first doctor thing. And then I think it was the second one when I went into the hospital and I came out. Um, and I sent it to the review board. And I have no clue what I said to him because I couldn't see the computer screen. Um, so my son literally had to help me, um, which was kind of funky. Oh my gosh, that sun is so bright. Uh, <laughs> it is super bright today. Holy crud. Um, but I think there's clouds going through because one minute's a little bright and the next minute it's somewhat bright. So yeah, the sun's fantastic today. And I'm not seeing four computer screens. Uh, the vertigo helps with that a lot. So, um, but yeah, that's basically my review on everything that's going on with me. Um, when I got out of the hospital, I didn't do nothing but sit in my chair and watch TV. And I was still seeing, you know, two, three screens. I couldn't even barely be on my computer. Um, so I literally had to shut down my computer and that. But, um, even watching TV was hard for me because I was seeing like three people instead of one. So if there was two people talking, there was three of them and three of them. <laughs> it was very hard to even watch TV. And I had to have my son get me a cold cloth to put on my eyes because they just kept burning. Now, the uh, nerve, that's what they called it. The nerves uh, were uh, attacked how you would say my brain could not detect what was up holy crap that's bright um <laughs> like i said every so often the sun's bright and then it gets dim oh my gosh hold up i'll be right back Okay, now you guys saw me bend over, right? And I got up right away. No dizziness, no nothing. Thank God for vertigo pills. Um, so I have another prescription to pick up to help more with the vertigo. So, um, but I figured since I got up, I would show you the base. So this is the base for my, um, my, uh, mop heavenly, <laughs> um, so this is the base. I plug it in here, right here. And then I just set this on the floor and attach the plug to the wall. And this is what I set her on. So when I sit her on the base, she sits just like this. And when you put her on the base, she'll literally say charging. Um, she literally talks. I wonder if I can get her to say something real quick. Yeah, so clean select mode. And then if you're not going to clean, you hold her down for three seconds. And then she'll shut off. Um, I really love this robot. But anyways, when I went in and had mopped the floors, I did her like twice. Because once she's done with the room, she'll be, she'll say something like, uh, cleaning done. And then I go and empty the container and then rinse off the, ro the roller. Now what I do with the roller is I literally take Dawn soap in my hands. I put a little drop and then I do this. And then I literally clean the, um, these. Now this yellow or this orange thing is actually scrubbers. This is just regular cloth, but these are the scrubbers. Um, you know, I didn't think it was going to work as good. You know, I was kind of, eh, you know, it's okay, whatever. But it actually does its job. It doesn't need any cleaning solution. Um, now, a lot of times, you know, I would mop just in case, you know, um, for disinfectant reasons. Um, but, you know, 
I don't have to constantly mop. You know, once a week, I could mop the floors regular, you know. I have her run basically every day. Uh, first in the kitchen, and I'll start having her do my room also. Uh, Eden goes around and vacuums up anything that, you know, was dropped, needs picked up, or whatever. And then when she's done, she'll go on the charger. She'll literally go to the charger and charge. Um, usually, I just, I have this remote for her. And the only buttons I use is the go button, which you have to push three times or two times, and then the home button. Um, I never use anything else other than the regular clean mode, which um, is basically this one right here. This one at the bottom. That one right there. Yeah. But, um, you know, if I notice she picked up everything, a lot of times I'll just send her home and then I'll do the mopping feature. Now, my other... My other thing for this is um, already dried out. I got two. One was already in the unit, and I got a spare one. I also got a scrub brush and, like, a metal, metal, I don't know what you want to call it, uh, and it has a little hook on it. It's to, to clean inside the dirty area if something like hair or something stuck in there and you got to pull it out. That's a way to get it. So... Um, I haven't had that problem because I don't have any animals. So, um, that's a good thing on that. Um, I plan on talking to my, um, my, um, my primary doctor about getting an emotional animal. Not just for me, but for my son. Basically for my son. Um, the cat would be in his room constantly. I would get a dog. I love dogs, but I just don't have the house for it, you know, running in the backyard so he can go poop so I don't have to go out in the cold and yeah, no. Um, but before we even get a cat, I'm getting a cat robot, uh, which is kind of like a cat cleaning litter box or whatever. I'll be getting that because I am not, because I'm allergic to pneumonia and cats, when they pee, that's pneumonia. Uh, I can't breathe that crap in. My son would have to do it, and my son would never do it. Um, but he'll have to clean it because it'll be his cat. It, I really won't need a cat for me. It'll be for him. Um, it'll be more of a support for him than it would be me. Um, but he would have to have the litter box in his room um, because there's no need to have it out here. Um but I'm going to talk to her about emotional animal. And if she, you know, I says my landlord doesn't allow pets. But I need some kind of companion for like when, um, when I'm like feeling sad or I'm feeling like, you know, my day isn't going good and I need something to, you know, comfort me and, you know. It'd be great to have a cat um, because the landlord said she needed documentation from a doctor. And I asked my psych doctor and he said, no, you'd have to go to your primary doctor. So that's a good thing. I'm going to my primary doctor. I don't know if she'll do it right away, but I would imagine she will. Um, so once she does that, then um, once I get my financial aid by the way, okay, my financial aid papers, the thing that I was talking about earlier, and I got subtracted, I got uh, sidetracked uh, to what I was saying. My financial aid, they reviewed it um, because otherwise I was going to have to pay 132 something back to the school. They reviewed it, and... <laughs> I don't know what the words and everything was, but I have an appointment at 10 a.m. to talk to um, one of the people that were on the board for the medical. And when I talk to him, I'm going to say I have no idea what I wrote in that, uh, in that letter that I had to fill out because my son, all he did was I could use my phone, but I couldn't see the computer screen. I mean, 
my phone was easier because I could have it up close. But if I had it far away, it is like, <laughs> um, but I was, my son actually literally had to help me. And I just took the pictures. I asked him, is it okay? You know, is it focused? Because I couldn't see if it was focused. And he says, yeah, now take the picture. So I took the picture and then I got to the next page and I tried to upload it, but it wouldn't let me. So I went to the next one. My son went down and he says, okay, I'm going to click this one. Let's go ahead and take another picture. So I took the picture. I asked him if it was clear. I took the picture and then uploaded the file. Um, he did all the clicking and the pointing and all that stuff. Um, and I just, I, I didn't even know what I typed. Like literally, I have no clue. And I think, because uh, all he, all my son did, he didn't read it to make sure it was understandable. He just corrected the errors. Um, so it basically told them exactly that I could not see the computer screen because my interpretation wasn't proper, how you would say it, for a, for a college student. So I sent them the documentation. They had the, the record of me being in the hospital at this date and this time that I got released. And, you know, all the test results and all that other stuff. I thought I was going to have to bring all that paperwork to school and say, here it is, you know. Um, but I got a message in my email yesterday. I was approved. So I don't owe the school anything. And they refunded the money that I paid for my class, which is really weird. Never thought that would happen. Um, so um, I have to wait until, I think it's the 22nd of March when they notify you what your refund is. Um, I don't think I'm gonna be getting much. Um, not exactly sure yet um, because the class hasn't even started. Um, oh, wait, wait a minute. Oh, okay, they, they start on the 19th, my uh, other class that I was enrolled in. I had to drop it because there's no way I would have been able to do it. Um, so basically, I've been just kind of keeping my house clean, you know, doing laundry, making sure dishes are done. Um, and my tables are a disaster. I have everything any, everywhere, so... I have to rearrange my tables because they're just covered with litter. And <laughs> so, but yeah, I love my vac my mop. It's fantastic. And you guys, I think I showed in a video uh, how much it costs. If you guys got a question uh, about how much it costs, uh, leave a comment below. But to be honest, it was well worth it. You know, I, I didn't think the hot water because... Anytime I did Eden for the hot water and the drag pad, it literally, it, it would literally not even clean it. Like, it would just brush water across. That's it. That's all it would do. Um, but this one actually scrubs, uh, which I wanted. Um, and it doesn't go over it once. It goes over it, like, good Lord, it goes over it three, four, five, maybe six times. I mean, it. well, you got to realize I have a small kitchen. I mean, it's just a little hallway, then the kitchen, and then the dining room. But the dining room is basically filled with everything. So I got to still organize that. Um, but I have to make sure, you know, that I'm steady. And then if I bend over and, you know. But, um, yeah, so that's about it. And I'm doing, oh, I'm doing much, much better. Um a lot of times if, you know, I'm late taking the, I'll just say the nerve thing. Um, if I'm late taking that, um, I start like feeling electrocution in my feet and it'll go up to my knees and then it'll go up to my hips and then it goes up to my shoulders and then it goes in my hands. And, but the only thing is it doesn't hurt. It just it's like uncomfortable. It's like a twitch, you know, and it is not comfortable at all. It feels really weird and yeah, I don't like it. So I make sure to take her, take her. I, I make sure to take my nerve damage three times a day and my vertigo three times a day. And then I take 
two of these at night for my mental illness and one of these for my other mental illness. So those are the only medications that I'm on. Um, I have one more I have to pick up Walgreens today. I'm going to do that later. I have to pick up toilet paper from Dollar General. I might have to pick up a couple of other things, but I'm not for sure. And then um, I, wanted, I wanted to show you guys something real quick before I end this. Um, this is what I have. Oh, I better not do that one. I better reopen. Da, 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 da. I better reopen. Okay. So, the thing that I want to get, um, is this right here. Um, this can get in the cracks and crevices that the, the mop does not do. Um, it has so many scrub brushes, um, which will help because some of the areas like around the toilets, um, the bathtub, uh, some of the corners, like, you know, this one right here in the base corners. I mean, there's like hair and everything else. Plus it's, it's even a hand one. So you don't have to have the, you know, the pole or whatever. But, um, this part I wouldn't do. Um, it's basically, I mean, you could do your stove. Um, this one is polish and wax, so I'm not sure about that one. Um, car surface cleaning, window cleaning. Oh, wow, I didn't even know it was window cleaning. Um, that's amazing. And then this one's bathroom, kitchen, and bathroom. Um, yeah, so a lot of these, like this, I mean, that's really bad. My my room is not that bad. <laughs> not that bad at all. But yeah, strong lifeline. Um, it's got an 8th gen uh, smart chip. I didn't know this. That's cool. Uh, brush head. No need to switch manually. Oh, wow. Um, it's got a great battery. Um, and then these are the lengths um of the um the arms in that but um it's 25.99 and then i saw this right here i saw this and it's an alexa watch so i definitely have to get that next month so these are the two things i want to get next month can't get it this month because i still have to get toilet paper and other other stuff that you know i have to get but I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks, guys, so much for the love and support. I know I said I was going to upload, like, I don't know how long ago. I wish I would have, but I totally spaced it. I am so sorry. But I hope you guys have a fantastic day. God bless, and I'll see you guys next time. This is Grandma signing out. Adios, amigos. Doses. I'm out.